Hi there, Dave with Crandall Office, and today we're gonna to be taking a closer look at the new Herman Miller Vantum gaming chair. We've had this chair about two weeks now, so we've had a good opportunity to really evaluate this chair. Uh, and I've personally been able to sit in this chair and work in it for, for an extended period of time. And really, um, there's a lot of good things about this chair, a lot of things that I like, and there's also a lot of things that I don't like, and there's some concerns I've got. Uh, so I wanna take some time to really do a deep dive on this chair, uh, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, my concerns, uh, and more importantly, is it worth the nine ninety five price tag that Herman Miller is asking for this chair today. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the first thing let's jump into is gonna be the unboxing experience of the Vantum chair. And if you watched our unboxing video, you know that I felt really good about the unboxing experience, and that's exactly what this was. It was an experience. They really spent a lot of time and money uh, and, and thought into how they packaged this chair. And I I'm, have no problem saying that that was probably the best unboxing experience I've experienced with a office chair of any kind. So big thumbs up on the unboxing experience. Uh, getting into the assembly, the assembly was really quick and easy. Again, you can watch that video to watch the process, but it was three simple steps. Uh, take the chair out of the box, put the, the frame onto the cylinder, and install the headrest, and you're good to go. So real quick and easy. Again, two thumbs up. They were able to compress the size of the box uh, without making the assembly process too complicated. So Herman Miller did a great job there. So now let's get into the actual looks and aesthetics of the new Vantum gaming chair. And if you watched our first impressions video, you know that pretty much everybody here unanimously felt that the looks of this chair were, were top notch. Uh, it's As you can see, the, the back is really what stands out here. It just has a really, the word that kept coming up was sleek when we were talking to everybody. Uh, sleek, modern, it, it just, it flows, it looks nice. This flare red just pops, especially next to the black. Uh, it really just has that kind of it factor going for it uh, when it comes into, when especially when you compare it to other chairs. Everybody really likes it. I think it hits that gaming mark really well as far as the looks go. Um, no complaints as far as as that goes from a, a first impression look standpoint. All right, so as we can see, the first impressions of this chair, the unboxing, the assembly, the looks of the chair, all top notch. Uh, but now let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video and of the review of this chair. And we're gonna get started with the actual seat of the chair. And so as I sit in the chair, this is a pretty firm seat, but it is a thick cushion. Um, I, generally, I think this is a pretty comfortable seat, um, but it is, it, it's gonna take a little getting used to for some people. So when we take a look at the actual seat slider on this seat, uh, that's where I kind of have some criticisms of this chair. Um, first and foremost, this is a tough seat slide mechanism. You see, I have to really kind of, and I, I, I don't know whether this is specific to our chair or not, but it has not loosened up over the few weeks that we've had it. Uh, it's just difficult to adjust the seat slide mechanism, uh, especially when you compare it to other chairs made by Steelcase and Herman Miller that uh, adjust and glide very easily. The other thing that I don't like about this is the depth at which the seat slides out. And so as you can see, this is as far out as this seat goes. I'm only about 5'8", but as I sit in the chair and I nestle my back into it, I have a lot of room here between um, the, the back of my legs and the front of the seat. And that's compounded by the fact that this seat has a pretty severe steep angle here on the front edge of it. Um, and so I would really like that seat to come quite a bit forward. When we were talking to some of the taller people here when they were testing the chair, it really, really bothered them. So uh, I think they missed a mark a little bit on that. I would like to see that seat slide much further forward than where it sits right now. All right, so now let's take a closer look at the back of the chair. And so when I sit in this chair, uh, I really, really like the feel of the mesh and how it kind of has a little bit of give to it. Uh, it just feels comfortable. So the posture fit on the back does a good job at being supportive. It's a little bit lower than I would prefer, which kind of runs in line with how I feel about the Aeron is that posture fit just hits me a little bit lower in the back than I would prefer. I really wish they would have added a, a height adjustment to the posture fit. Um, outside of that, uh, we, I do have a few quality concerns on this posture fit. It's just, it seems to be a little bit more plasticky and a little bit, um, it, it, we've had some issues with it is what I'm gonna say. And so number one, uh, and this didn't happen when we first got the chair, but I can turn this and it just keeps turning. And so it's tough to get that 
uh, highest point. So right, that's where you want it to be and then it kind of falls back on you. Um, I'm not sure if this is broken or not, uh, but we've had some major issues with it. As I was adjusting it uh, one day when I was sitting in the chair, uh, this entire mechanism actually came out. So this wheel mechanism came out. And then also um, this side of the, you can see I'm turning this. Um, not sure if you can see that or not, but nothing's actually turning on the posture fit. I'm, I think this side of the um, the lever or the uh, the knob here is broken. So we've already seen a few kind of uh, issues with this posture fit system, uh, enough to give me some some major concerns about the longevity of that lower lumbar support and how it was designed and how it adjusts. Um, the upper back support, though, I will say, is very welcome and it's. Uh, it's, it's not very intrusive, but it provides some good support. Um, when we were testing this chair, we had uh, Ryan actually pulled the thoracic support out and asked me to lean back in it, and then he put it back in and asked me to lean back in it. And it was a significant difference, but it wasn't one that I felt originally without him saying something. So it provides a really good level of support, but it's not pushing into you. Uh, this is also something that uh, Jake is our kind of resident tall person here. He said this made a huge difference in the comfort of this chair, uh, even in comparison to a lot of other high-end chairs that don't really provide some additional support here. All right, so lastly, when we're talking about the back of this chair, let's talk about the mesh. And as you can see, this mesh has a lot of give to it. It feels more like a fabric than the mesh that we're used to on the Aeron chair that has a bit of a plasticky feel. Um, but that mesh has stood the test of time because of how it's constructed and how it feels. Um, this, I'm a little bit concerned with whether or not this is gonna last or not. And if it doesn't, if we're able to replace it. Um, at first glance, I don't think that this is gonna be a mesh that you're gonna be able to easily replace. I think this entire back is gonna have to come off and be replaced if you do need to replace the mesh. Uh, I will definitely correct myself if I'm wrong in that. We are gonna be doing a little bit deeper dive and tearing this chair apart a little bit. Uh, but that's first impressions. It seems to be that way, probably sonically welded around this frame. All right, so now let's take a closer look at the arms on the Vantam chair, uh, their adjustability, comfort. We're gonna see that they do have a good amount of height adjustment here. Uh, and they also have a, a forward back and side to side slide on them. Uh, there is no pivot functionality. Pivot! on these arms, which I'll talk a little bit more about um, in what my opinion is on that from when I was using the chair a little bit later. Uh, but the actual, it's got a good padded uh, arm pad here. It, it is pretty comfortable. This does slope in at a pretty severe angle here that you can see. Um, and I, I don't necessarily like that design. I would rather it have been a full pad design to provide support all the way in. Uh, these arm pads really don't go that far in. The amount of adjustability that these have on the forward to back and side to side is pretty limited. And I would have liked to see this arm pad be more of a flat surface across the board. So I did want to touch on the arm design a little bit. And what I said um, I disliked quite a bit about the arm was that, that this, this chamfered edge that they have designed into it. Uh, they're claiming that this is mainly for, if you're using a controller, it's gonna give you a little bit of uh, additional stability here. And again, I'm not feeling it. I can't really rest into that position. Um, it might give you a little bit extra if you're kind of in the arms here. But again, so if I push these in and I'm gaming, it's gonna, these are gonna slide out on me. And that's too wide for my comfort. I would like them at about there if I'm gonna be um, using a controller. I think I like what they're going after with this, but I, I'm not sure that it really accomplishes it, especially with how easy these are to slide in and out. If I'm sitting here and I'm gaming, you can see it's just, it, those will slide out on you. Uh, but I wanted to mention that that's why that design was made that way. In a working environment, I found it to be terribly uncomfortable um, and, and really not usable in the way that they designed it. All right, so now let's take a look at the headrest design on the Vantam chair. And this is gonna be an area that, um, I've got some frustrations with this chair on the headrest design. Um, the first and foremost is that it's very difficult to, especially in the downward position, to adjust this headrest. It really just fights you the whole way. It's got a lot of good ratchet positions, but trying to position it exactly where you want it is, is frustrating to say the least. Um, the, this pivot motion I think is good. Uh, it does feel a little bit clunky. Um, and this is, you can see the plastic teeth in here. Again, I'm not sure how that's gonna hold up over time being plastic teeth in there, um, but we won't know that for quite some time. It does pivot a lot easier than it goes up and down. As I come around and actually sit in the chair and use the headrest itself, I'm gonna, again, try to position it and 
that feels about good to me. And so as I'm so as I'm sitting in an upright position, it's uh, I'm not really engaged with the headrest at all, um, which can be a pro or a con. I really like uh, being able to position this headrest so that it really kind of cradles my neck while I'm working in an upright position. I think that's more comfortable for me. Uh, that said, once I get into a recline position, it really supports me well and feels nice. Uh, also, it's not really, it has not shown that it's gonna move on you with time or use um, just because of how tight that mechanism is. I, you can see, I really gotta, really gotta, no, that's really a sticking point for me is that it's really tough to adjust. So one final thing I did want to know, and this comes from using the chair for uh, for a few days while I was working in my office, is that every time if I was leaning back in the chair and I got up out of the chair, it this headrest has a rattle to it. And you can kind of see, uh, it, it just kind of has a little bit of a movement to it, but it also has some noise associated with that rattle that uh, I found to be very distracting and it really just kind of made it feel cheaper than it might even be. Um, just because every time I got out of the chair, this thing kind of went and went, and you see it just kind of rattles a little bit. Um, again, not a deal breaker, not a major issue, but something I noticed and something that frustrated me in using the chair. So when we look at the actual pad of the headrest. It is a uh, foam pad covered by, uh, covered by fabric. Uh, it's a good, comfortable design. It's got a lot of curve to it, and it does really, uh, it sticks out further as you rotate it and see how much that changes. But the pad itself has got a lot of cushion, a lot of comfort. Uh, I like that, they really did that well. All right, so now let's take a deeper dive at the actual tilt functionality of this chair. And so as we sit in the chair on our left-hand side, we have our backstop. And as you can see, this is going to uh, lock upright in its most forward position. And I've mentioned this uh, over a past couple of videos. I really like how this locks upright into an upright position. It really does, uh, doesn't have that kind of uh, small give that a lot of these other chairs that we that we look at from Steelcase and from Memoir have. It really kind of locks upright nice. It feels good. It does have a little bit of flex in the back, but that's built in. Uh, you're not pushing this and then having a stop point. You, like It feels like it's already locked upright. Um, and then as we go all the way into the most rear position, you can see how far back this chair leans. Uh, probably right in line with a lot of the other main Steelcase and Herman Miller chairs, uh, right into the ergonomic, uh, ergonomic range of lean back. So it's not gonna have that full recline that you see on some of the gaming chairs. You see, I'm all the way back in the chair right now, and that's a good level of recline to me. Uh, I can't see myself ever working in anything further back than that. That said, I, see, I do see a lot of gamers that, that like that full we recline position when they're gaming. So if that's you, uh, I'm not sure that this is gonna provide you quite as much lean back as you might be used to in a traditional gaming chair, uh, but a good level of adjustment in the, the, the variable stop tilt lock. All right, so now let's take a look at the lean back tension adjustment, which is one of the things I like most about this chair and how it was designed. Um, it's not a traditional wheel that you would just spin until you have your tension proper, properly set to you, um, but it does have seven different positions that are easy to click into that provide different levels of lean back tension. Um, and so at the least amount of tension, you can see I has almost no pushback at all. And when we get into the uh, level, you know, three, four, five here, it's got a decent level of push into your back. Uh, once you get up to the highest level, um, I do, I, I gotta, I gotta fight it a little bit. It wants to push me into a forward position. So I would say I would like to see an additional level of back firmness. Um, this does, I do have to fight this a little bit, but I know uh, through talking to our customers over the years, there's a lot of people that really like to be able to crank up that that uh, lean back tension. And I don't think that that gives quite enough uh, for somebody who's in that position. Uh, what I love about this though, is just how quick I can go from very little to a ton of tension. And especially if you compare it to something like the Herman Miller Aeron Classic, that you gotta spin that dial over a hundred times to go from least to most tension. Uh, this allows you to rapidly switch between those modes. Uh, I, I really like this design. I think it's one of the better designs from that aspect out of any chair I've ever used. It's just, I like being able to switch that real quick and easy. So one quick thing that is worth mentioning uh, as I'm talking about this uh, lean back tension is that you have to be in the fully upright position in order to change it. So if I'm lean back, I can't adjust this. I need to be in the upright position. Not a deal breaker at all, but wanted to mention it as it was something I noticed as I was adjusting it through the day. Uh, another quick thing to note on these, uh, the, both the lean back tension and the, the tilt lock, uh, they both have these numbers on the dials, which I absolutely love. Uh, I really like being able to just kind of know exactly where you are. It'll also let you kind of establish, hey, my preferred setting is a four on the lean back tension and a three on the tilt lock. Uh, and you can then quickly dial that in versus trying to guess and trying to get it exactly right. You're gonna be able to quickly set to where you want to be and quickly reference it. 
um, just by looking at the dials. I, I think that was a really great design choice. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about one of my least favorite design choices on the Bantam Gaming Chair, and that is the forward tilt design. And so by design, this kind of puts you into a forward facing mode, and they claim that that's to, to help you with your reaction times and uh, kind of be engaged in when you're gaming. And I think it accomplishes that, that specific task very well. Uh, what I really dislike about it is that you can't disengage it. It's always pushing you forward. So when I was in a working environment and I didn't want to be in a forward active uh, kind of position, um, I was constantly having to push back on the back of the chair. I was always in a partial recline, even when I wanted to just be upright. Um, I, I really wish they would have made this an optional for a, an adjustment that you could turn on and off and would put you into a more neutral position and then a forward facing position uh, when you want it or need it, similar to what they have on the Aeron chair. Um, having it always be engaged and always in a front facing, it just, it, it's very uncomfortable to me personally personally, especially if you're gonna be using this chair for more than just gaming. You're gonna be working in this chair for any period of time. It, it just, it's very distracting and it's very, uh, it, you have to consciously kind of reset this into a position and then you're not in a locked position, which I just, I don't like that design choice. All right, so let's jump in the million dollar question, and that is, is this chair worth the 995 that Herman Miller is asking for it? And my opinion is, I don't think that it is. And let me share with you why I feel that way. Um, I, I don't think this is a bad chair. I think that there are a few small misses. I think there's a, a few quality concerns that I do have with the chair. Um, but we need to remember, this is a thousand dollar chair we're looking at. Um, having any of those issues, on the first impression and having you know things break and having major concerns in the first week is not something I would expect out of a thousand dollar chair. Um, now, if we're directly comparing this to some of the gaming chairs, I think this is a major step up from a traditional bucket seat gaming chair. Uh, it offers, it, it jumps, it's more of an ergonomic chair in my opinion than it is a gaming chair. Uh, they took a lot of design aspects and kind of called this a gaming chair, but it's more of an ergonomic chair and I'd love to see that. We've always recommended that people uh, steer in the direction of ergonomic chairs versus gaming chairs for the support and comfort that they offer. I think this accomplishes that and I think it's a major step in that direction for the gaming community and bringing light to ergonomics into the gaming space. Uh, that said, when we're looking at this price point, we have a lot of really great ergonomic chairs that are well established that I think are better chairs from a lot of standpoints. You know, we can look at the, the Herman Miller sale chair, the uh, Steelcase Amia, the Steelcase Think, the Hayworth Fern, they're all kind of in that general price range, uh, give or take a little bit depending on sales and different things. Uh, but I, I think all of those chairs are much better chairs uh, from an ergonomics comfort, adjustability, um, you name it, I think that they have a, 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 just a step up above this chair. And again, I don't want to say that this is a bad chair. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that, you know, at $1,000, you can step into something like a Steelcase V2 Leap chair. Uh, it's it's going to be a little bit of a step up in price, but it's a major step up in quality ergonomics. Uh, and it's a chair that stood the test of time. You know what you're going to get and you know it's going to last for a long, long time uh, and really be supportive. It's, um, I, I think they made a couple of odd design choices. Uh, the forward tilt not being something that you can, you can, deactivate I think is one of my primary things that I dislike the most about this chair. Um, if you're going to be using this chair for anything other than straight gaming then I think um, you're going to be much more well suited into a different chair in that same price point. So is this worth the $9.95? No, I don't think it is. Uh, I think there's other better options out there at that price point. Um, I, I do really like where the direction that Herman Miller is going. I like that they're pushing the gaming chair into the ergonomic space. I think they did a great job on the design of the aesthetics of this chair, uh, but I just think that there are better options available at that price point. So that's where I'm going to leave it here. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree. Um, I know that there there, you know, I've had some strong opinions on some of these and uh, I would love to hear what you guys think and what you guys uh, have experienced in using this chair. So I think that's all I really have to say about this chair. Uh, thank you again for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please click the like and subscribe buttons below. If you've got any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out to us at our website, CrandallOffice.com, our Facebook page, anywhere you can reach us, we're always here to help. So thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time.